My name is Michael Klein and we're here at East Oaks Studio and we're going to be demonstrating uh, my thinking process, my thought process be behind how I uh, manipulate the colors on my palette. So oftentimes uh, when students are in a situation of having to see color, there are so many things thrown at them um, between paint handling, drawing, uh, making a beautiful work of art, that they're overwhelmed. So with this exercise of taking nature, bringing it into the studio, it allows you to see the object void of any kind of art making and really understand how to uh, reach different uh, areas of your palette. So we'll go from extremely saturated color to really uh, unsaturated colors. So I've gone outside and selected a variety of objects, a couple flowers and some leaves. I'll start with this idea of how I mix greens. Um, I keep it simple to start out. So we're going to start with a transparent warm and I'm going to add ultramarine blue to it. So what I'm doing in this mixture is I'm creating a transparent dark and it can lean from cool to warm. So because I have a blue and a red in that mixture, it's neutralizing and I want to take it, I want to expand it out to a different section of the color spectrum. So I want to bring it into the hue family of the greens. So by do, thinking about, okay, if I have this arrangement, if I expand it, I want to have more blue in the mixture and then introduce a chromatic yellow. So if I slide these objects over, and if you look here, as I introduce the yellow into the blue, this mixture of three colors, you can see it, it immediately shifts into the green. With every object that you're looking at, there's a different uh, hue, chroma, and value involved. So uh, in this scenario, I'm going to push it and make sure that it gets chromatic enough. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and then you're going to reach with the ultramarine blue you're going to reach a point where the chroma is going to drop off because it's a dark pigment so I'm going to have to introduce another paint that's going to allow me to expand up into a higher range so at this point I'm going to grab the viridian so when I look at it here I'm seeing from this angle there's way too much yellow in there so I can mix a little bit more viridian and see, so now that shoots me back into the area of the spectrum that I'm, I'm going for. Now if that is too chromatic, then oftentimes greens have a lot of warmth in them as well. So I'll, I'll uh, introduce a neutral yellow to be able to uh, search for those values that come back into the shadows and drop off and so they, the light is dropping off and they're losing saturation. <clears throat> so you, you can see this set of leaves to the left that would be uh, closer, if I just move this over, that would be closer up. Now that I have some yellow up there, I would choose to add yellow on the palette in that area because I'm expanding over to uh, a more yellow area. So you can see there then so here I just have this simple arrangement of basic green color and then as I'm looking at this leaf there's a lot more of the brighter yellow. So within that uh, if I'm thinking about the way that the stem is a lot warmer uh, in this pile, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna. So then you start to get that warmth, maybe some cad violet. So now moving on to, um, with that same idea of getting up into the yellows, I'm going to take a really dried leaf and continue expanding up into that area. So I add white. Some cat orange 
you can see how really quickly it's going in the direction. Now that's not a perfect mix for this. Uh, what you can do is think about, okay, what's, what's wrong with my mixture? Do I need to go lighter? Do I need to go darker? Uh, maybe a combination of both. I think in this, because it's a dried, it's a dried leaf, there's a lot of brown in there. So I'm going to shift on my palette to the left. And at the same time, there's areas of it that uh, would go less chromatic and lighter. So I'm going to go up to my right, add some yellow. Let's see, so all those. See, so as I'm doing this, as I'm expanding and moving around, <clears throat> I'm searching for the, the proper note. So each object that I'm looking at while I'm painting, I'm thinking about how this system of color works on my palette. So it's, it's set up so that I have my most saturated colors up towards the light. And then as I go down to the left, they're the least saturated color. Uh, so I have three primary colors down to the lower left. My ivory black is my neutral blue. My burnt umber is a neutral red and my raw umber is a neutral yellow. So in this case, if here, this bud that's completely dried out, I would prefer to start with raw umber because that's my neutral yellow and then I'd add a neutral red, which could be burnt sienna. And see, so I'm, I'm mixing those, those dark browns and then Beyond that, it gets, as it gets up into the light, it gets more chromatic with some orange and yellow, that one. So now that we've kind of branched into the orange, um, I think that it, you, can, you can kind of organize your palette at the start of your painting so that the first 10, 15 minutes you really should be able to figure out the color harmony of the piece. I typically tell students that uh, the first you know, 15 minutes to a half hour is really getting your palette organized and set up so that then you can uh, get into the, the real fun part of painting. So here, I'm going to use this flower. And so when I look at it, I just see a base note of orange. I'm going to use burnt sienna, cad yellow. See, that gets this close. There may be areas of cad orange. And along there, you see the stem, which is a, a green. So going back to this idea of cad yellow and viridian. See, so in the stem there, then it goes up into the yellow oranges. and then finally into the more chromatic orange that I'm seeing there. This should be viewed as an instrument and there's, there's higher notes and lower notes. So it, I typically mix from left to right and I go from dark to light always. So every, every puddle that I'm mixing, I get into a habit of going from the shadow up into the lights. So as it goes up into the lights, it gets more chromatic, and it reaches its peak, peak uh, chroma. Over here, I have one left, which is the, the red. So for that, we've already mixed the greens. Here, I would grab my most chromatic red, which is a magenta. <clears throat> then I would open it up with white and make sure I know where it's tipping. So here, so you can see it's tipping towards the blue. So by testing it like that, I can say, okay, in my, in my flower, I have a lot more warmth. So I'm going to add just a little bit of the cat orange, cat red, make sure it's getting that warmth that's there. Then there's also a deeper, darker value. So then I would grab the magenta and the alizarin and mix it with a little bit of ultramarine blue. 
see, so then again, same way you have this idea of traveling from the darks up into the lightest light. So here we have that. This one's here. Uh, this one would be a combination of those up there. And then this one's there. So you can see that. This. Not to be confusing, I can I can show you this green. That green has a lot more blue in it. See, so there that because it's had those cool pinks, and then it gets into the more neutral kind of blue greens. So that's how I organize my palette. Uh, it takes away the the. Uh, mystery of color mixing and it makes it very practical and very um, simple when you can see it directly right on the palette then you're, you're not uh, confused by any drawing or uh, picture making but it's just very practical and I would encourage you to uh, do this in your studio it, it removes the layer of um, kind of this when we're creating paintings, we're constantly judging our ability, and then that, that gets in the way of the actual practicality of it. So this just allows it to be simple um, theory and practice, so you can get good at mixing color without having to worry about making a picture. All right, thank you for joining us. This has uh, been a lot of fun. We'll be doing more videos like this. Please leave your comments and suggestions below. Uh, please subscribe to us and spread this video to as many people that you think will be interested by it. Thanks a lot.